Now we're going to meet the founder and the company composer of ballets with a twist, who have been partners in choreographic crime for several decades now. <laughs> Marilyn Claus is the director and founder. Welcome to BK Live. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. <laughs> and joining her is composer Stephen Gabori. This weekend, Ballets with a Twist will be on stage for the Brooklyn Ballet's first look, and we're also delighted to welcome back Lynn Parkerson, Brooklyn Ballet's artistic director. Thank you for coming back, Lynn. Why don't we start with you? Tell us about the motivation behind creating First Look. First Look, um, well, I moved to Brooklyn uh, in 98, started the Brooklyn Ballet in 2002. We got our own space in 2009 after lots of lots of conversations and work. And then there was a theater right in the building that the Actors Fund managed. And so uh, one of the ideas of the Actors Fund was to create a performing space for, for dance and other, other kinds of arts groups. And so we were the first group to perform there. And the first thing we did there was First Look. And this was in 2010, I believe. Uh, just right after we got there, we opened the theater. Um, and we've been doing an annual First Look uh, series ever since uh, that, that I time. I love it. How do you select the choreographers and companies that you're going to work with? Well, a different, we, it's curated, so, mm -hmm. uh, and we change the curator from year to year. The first year I did it, I called it Brooklyn Ballet and Friends, and I called friends and people I loved. <laughs> Marilyn was one of them to, to present ballets with a twist at that time, and, and there were other, a lot of other choreographers involved. And the next year, another another curator, and, and we've I think this is probably our sixth curator. Um, we have two co-curators this time: Remy Harris and Richard Glover, who are on the staff at Brooklyn Ballet. And it's it's a great opportunity for artists and choreographers who are also working in the in the dance world and in other ways to um, to continue to to create and by by curating or sometimes by bringing their own work to the um, to the series. So it's. It's uh, just a nice community that comes together around the first look. So, Marilyn, it. we saw that with the costume piece, inspiration comes in lots of different mm. forms. Yes. Which, of course, leads me to that series that you've been producing, A Twist. You were inspired by some of our favorite adult beverages. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and I, I think the, the main inspiration is uh, my home life, you know, growing up with my mom and dad in Hollywood, California area, and uh, and nightlife. They really, there was such a thing, and um, I like putting nightlife on stage. Um, so it's a nightclub effect. Mm -hmm. So um, it makes it really fun, but you can also get into some interesting characters like Bloody Mary. <laughs> that worked yeah. out. That worked out quite well. And at, um, at first look, we're really excited because I've started a piece called Rum Runner, and so it's getting into some of the Caribbean aspects. So we're going to show Cuba Libre, mm -hmm. which you did see, yeah. and then I'm showcasing, it's never been seen at all, the Caipirinha, the Brazilian oh, one. Nice. Mm. And so that gets into it's Candomblé, and, <laughs> and yeah, and it just, there's just so much color uh, with every, Every cocktail, I mean, they're named after people's fantasies and right. people's desires to kind of get lost, yeah. you know? So it's it kind of goes into very creative uh, possibilities. Well, right. creative possibilities. <laughs> Steven, when she calls you up, Marilyn's on the line, she just says, Cuba Libre, and then you just start, <laughs> dun, 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 like, how does the process work with you guys? It, no two cocktails are the same. Um, often, uh, she'll, sh have an idea and maybe she'll start working with some music, some existent music, mm -hmm. mu music and start working the piece out and then I'll come in I'll, and I'll be next to Catherine as she's figuring out what, what the costume will be and uh, I'll, I'll sometimes video the piece and go home and look with different types of music to, to see, you know, what, how far can this go, what, what can it can be. One time I, I, I came watch Marilyn teaching ballet class and she was using Run DMC. You know, it wasn't Tchaikovsky. All right, we're not and, mad at that. And, <laughs> and, you know, and so I mean, to, often people will ask me, well, what's the twist? To me, for the, the music, the twist of the music is, I can combine any, you know, I can, I can have hip hop with a, a classical theme with uh, a, a rock groove, you yeah. know, and, and she's game. 
So, no bounds. Yeah. Steven, I think we actually have some of yeah, your pieces playing <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, can you tell us what what we just heard? I think I just heard uh, Cuba Libre, okay. which is which we're going to uh, perform on Saturday, and. Um, uh, Marilyn and I are both big fans of, of Latin and salsa music and the corso and uh, salsa meets jazz at the old village gate and so that that one was pretty easy actually. <laughs> I love it. So Lynn, this seems like exactly what we expect from seeing new work and established people who just put all of these different ideas and it seems very Brooklyn to me for the Brooklyn Ballet. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right, definitely. And I, I, what, I, what I love about what Marilyn and Steve do and what, I, what other choreographers and, and myself, it's, it's really sort of breaking down some barriers and getting out of maybe the entrenched way that yeah, ballet is supposed to be and this is supposed to be. To and, <laughs> and, and while still maintaining what, what ballet is, the beautiful tradition and the rigor of ballet, but really letting other things come in and influence and bring it to new places, that's really what, um, you know, Marilyn and I have known each other a very long time and been supporting each other's work and kind of seeing, you know, just supporting each other going out and doing something other than maybe what, what you might see, mm -hmm. you know, from time to time in, in the bigger theater, so. Um. I love that you guys do so much of this kind of line blurring and the mixing of the different cultures and types of music. Um, if we didn't know, let's say, what keeps it being ballet? So, you know, I see some of those pieces and I'm like, well, this kind of reminds me of, of jazz or modern or, or whatever. This is just like a cumbia or whatever, whatever it might be. What what keeps it being ballet? I mean, aside from just like toe shoes, you know, in, in case we didn't know, let's say. Right, well certainly point work is mm -hmm. distinctive to ballet, but there's a kind of verticality mm -hmm. in the movement that comes out of the French court of Louis XIV and a particular way of organizing the body, all of which you can go off of, but you, it's nice to come back to that space too, and it's kind of a spiraling upward mm -hmm. of the body and the spirit and which it even allows for the point work to, to, to happen. even happen. You know, there's just a lot of, uh, a lot of specific training that's um, specific to ballet. And then, of course, we, we expect our ballet dancers to, to be able to go, to, to go away from that and come back to it at least, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I love that. Well, Marilyn, this is securely in your wheelhouse. I know we have some video of you working with some oh. of <laughs> your dancers and keeping them going through their paces. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I love how Lynn described what makes ballet and, uh, and it, that verticality that she's talking about, that's our humanity. We, our invisible mm -hmm. string. Our invisible string, mm -hmm. and we stood up. Yeah. We're not on all fours, and we're taking it all the way. Mm -hmm. It is the most extreme sport that exists. That's wow. it. And you, it will, the, the uh, exploration will never, ever end. And so it's actually eternally modern. You know, it's, it's not a style. It is a training that makes you fly. You know, it's it's an, it's an inspiring form. And it's 400 years old. I, you know, it's it's an, it's it continues to be. You know, from from you know through all the costumes and social changes and countries and and yeah. ethnicities, ballet just kind of works its way through. People are attracted to it and want to experience it. I love it. We heard a little bit about Stephen's process in working with you guys. I'm curious about how you work on your choreography and what comes first. And do you mm -hmm. just get some dancers in there or do you have the idea first? How does it work? Well, in my case, it's the fear factor. I <laughs> absolutely love the total blank slate mm -hmm. and, the, and being to completely petrified uh, into, you know, Johnny on the spot and and what's going to come out of my unconscious. I now realize mm. that. Mm. And um, so far I have not been let down. Good. Yeah. Um, and then, but Stephen and Catherine are there all the time to support me, as are the dancers. Yeah. 
-hmm. and they are good sports and try not to make faces. <laughs> Though I do hear that bets <laughs> are taken as to is, is that really going to remain? Really? Yeah. Oh, and, wow. and even last week's rehearsal, they got a little rebellious because they know they're performing this weekend. They really wanted me to set their heads to within like 12 <laughs> degrees, and I said, I'm not going to do that. Really? I said, yeah. I said, I said I, I'm going to go, 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 and, and then... we'll take care of this cleaning later. And they said, yes, but we build bad habits. I said, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So there's a note for young artists in there somewhere. It's like, right. you do the work, you do the work, you know your stuff, and you leave a little room for God to come in at the Thank end you. to make the inspiration, Big right? time. Yes. Yeah. God, yeah. God is the mistake, and the mistake is <laughs> always better than the in. plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to end it on oh, that. Nice. <laughs> Let's say goodbye before we leave. <laughs> Thank you all so much. <laughs> we'll have to come and check out First Look, which is happening this weekend. Yes, this yeah. weekend. Okay. Go to the BrooklynBallet.com. You can get tickets and all that jazz. Yeah, and there's an after party at Livingston and Manor. An after party. Livingston with, Manor. With, if you bring your program and you're an audience member, you get um, drinks. Um, a happy hour drinks. Yeah. Uh, after the show Talk with the dancers, things. meet and greet. All right. And we have Free Beer Fridays. Greenport Harbor Brewery is our this year's sponsor for Free Beer Fridays. Delicious. So if you come on Dinner Friday, you show. get a free beer before a show. and a cocktail okay. after. Well, good deal. We'll see you there. You know where we'll it's be. It's fun. Right